Hello, welcome to the Kitchen Table Models Workshop. My name's Ian, and this is my modeling setup where I make all my models. So, review time again. And I've got a few of these coming. Uh, but today we are looking at a reasonably new toolkit from Academy. And it's their A6M2B0 Fighter Model 21. And this is their uh, Battle of Midway 80th Anniversary Edition. Um, interesting subject from Academy. Uh, I think when it was announced, then Edard had possibly announced that they were doing uh, a new Tool Zero. And up to that point, uh, you either had the old Tamiya offering or you had uh, a very nice Hasegawa offering, which I have built. And it's a lovely kit. But there weren't so many you know, new tooled, up-to-date versions of the Zero, which is a hugely influential fighter aircraft from the Pacific Theatre and quite a popular subject to build as well. So I thought it was a really bold move for Academy to tackle this. Um, I have to admit, I'm a bit of a fanboy for Academy. I've built an awful lot of their kits and I really do like the way they produce their kits. Um, so I was really interested to see how this one turns out. Um, I bought it in a lot of kits I got for my, my birthday. And yeah, I'm really quite excited to see what's in the box. Uh, being Academy, it's probably going to build together pretty well, but who knows that until we get there. Um, but the first thing to do would be get the kit on the table, get the camera down there, and we'll have a look at what actually comes in the box, and then we can see what we think about the quality of the parts. So, we're on the table. Uh, first off, box art. That's really nice, isn't it? Um, it's a digital rendering, right enough, but it's of a classic um, engagement of the Second World War Pacific Theatre, Battle of Midway. And we've also got a zero fighter fed and off attacks on the Japanese carriers. So, um, this is 148th scale and it is kit number. Look at the side end here. We've got kit number 12352 uh, from Academy of Korea of their A6M2B Zero Fighter Model 21. And again, it's as I said, it's the Battle of Midway 80th Anniversary Edition. Uh, we've got five options. Um, we've got the Akagi, an aircraft from the Akagi. We've got two aircraft from Akagi. We've got uh, an aircraft from Kaga. We've got an aircraft from Soyuru and Hiru. If I excuse my pronunciation, they may not be well. Uh, correct. And then we've got the bump on the side, paint index, and for 14 years and over, so it's not intended for children. Um, top opening box, good stout box. There was a little bit of damage in the post, but mm, nothing I can't live with. Uh, we have a number of sprues, and then we've got the decals and instant manuals. So, as always, we'll look at the manual first. That box out of the way. There we go. Um, right now, Academy have changed their style of manuals over the years, and they've kind of opted for like a two-stage type manual with a part two and the painting side on the part two, and part one manual is mostly the construction. So, uh, if I can get this in frame, we've got all the paint call out on the first page. And a little bit of information, please read before assembly. And then it's um, the old-fashioned pull-out sheet, reminiscent of Tamiya and Airfix and so on and so forth. But we can take roughly two pages in one go. So we start with the cockpit. Uh, we've got part one, we've got cockpit floor. I'm bringing together the instrument panel, going up the cockpit floor, uh, building up the pilot seat, um, adjust the mechanism, uh, rear frame building up to the cockpit floor and then we've got side consoles uh, rear of the machine guns uh, sighting units we've got oxygen canisters that's all on sort of part one and part two moving on to part three we then move on to uh, sideboard detail of the right hand side cockpit we're putting in the cockpit assembly we've got detail in the left-hand side cockpit and then we're bringing them together 
Now, it would appear that there's a pilot figure for this if you want, which is really good. Um, I don't tend to build them, uh, but for those that do, it's nice to have one. We don't usually get pilot figures with models nowadays. So part six, we're bringing the fuse and shafts together. And then part seven, we are... Oh, I need to fold these instructions better. Yeah, part seven, we're finishing off the end of the MG barrels on the upper cowling, engine cowling. Uh, well, the rear, rear upper cowling, fuselage, sorry, it's not the engine cowling because that goes on ahead of that. Part eight, we're constructing the engine, which is very, re very reminiscent of an old sort of Tamiya radial engine. Part nine, uh, continuing part eight, we bring together the propeller parts. Um, we've got color callouts as we go, which is really nice. Um, moving on, we've got the front cowling. Um, bringing that over the engine, putting in the exhaust, do not glue, because you want it to spin. Bringing the exhaust onto the rear, and then we've got the, the louvered vents here um, before we then bring it all together. And we've got a paint scheme for the propeller. Uh, it looks like we've got a mask set for the aircraft canopy as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, once we finish the engine detail in part 9, we're moving on to the wings. So we've got the undercarriage wheelbase. Um, we've got the undercarriage closed for in flight or lowered for on the ground. So you decide what you want to build your kit. Uh, I would imagine it looks like you need to assemble this before you put it into the fuselage. Um, but I would imagine with a bit of canny engineering or canny modeling, we'd be able to leave the undercarriage till after we've put it all together but it would need to be you need to check that um bringing the bill forward we've then got the uh, part 13 we've got the wheels and the wheel bay doors going in place nice alignment drawings to show you how everything should line up which is really really nice to see and then we've got the upper wing surfaces being brought down onto the lower wing surfaces before we move on to part two of the manual. Part two of the manual is more colored. Uh, we're bringing the fuselage and the wings together. And then we have options here for drop flaps or not. So we've got flaps, ailerons, dropped or not dropped. And then we move on to Um, the options of the tail wheel, bringing that together onto the rear of the aircraft. We've got a landing hook and then we've got a long range fuel tank. Bringing on the horizontal stabilizers, some more um, headrest detail and gun sight for the pilot. And then moving on to the canopy, and we've got a really nice plan diagram of how all the canopy masks go together. And you've got the option of open or closed canopy, which is really, really nice. And then you've got the option of uh, deployed or folded wingtips, which is really, really nice as well. So quite a lot of detail in this kit, um, and it gives a lot of promise. And then once we've done that, we've moved on to the paint schemes. And as you've probably guessed, for that time of the conflict, most of the paint scheme is overall IGN um, aircraft like grey with... Um, 14 which is it's probably something like a matte black or uh, number 14 cowling color oh it doesn't tell you it just says cowling color so it's going to be an off black so a nato black or something like that and it's you can weather these aircraft because these aircraft were used um, in the pearl harbor attack um, and they would be weathered um, so you've got your decal schemes basic um, stenciling basic decals and then you move on to your individual uh, marking schemes um, so you've got the model that flew off of a Kagi uh, the second model that flew off of oh this is the one that flew off Kaga and you've got two options for uh, markings for the one that flew off a of Kagi you've got the model that flew off of Kaga you've got the aircraft that flew off a of Soiru and then you've got the aircraft that flew off a of Hiru and then finally, you have got an overall parts layout. So, yeah, really nice instructions. 
I think they're quite easy to follow and they should be helpful for the modeler. Um, there's a few bits of information leaflets in about basic modeling techniques. Well, I'll throw them away if you're an experienced modeler. If you're not, take time to read them. I'm not going to take the decals. Oh no, I can. It's not sealed. So we'll take the decals out. Academy decals. Hit and miss sometimes. The older Academy decals have been a pain in the bottom to do. But these ones look absolutely lovely. They are printed by the Academy Model Co. And the date's date coded 2022. Um, so it's a very current kit. Um, they're a little glossy. But there's very, very minimal carrier film. Um, and Modern Academy decals I've had no problems with. Uh, they tend to go down very nicely with a little bit of um, uh, micro set and micro sole. We've also got um, a paint mask and the Academy um, paint masks are really nice too. Right, parts. going to need a knife. Got a knife. I'm just going to grab them as they come. There's no particular order. So first sprue I am grabbing out is the D sprue, which is the underwing. All right, first opinions. Ah, oh, lovely. Yeah, really, really nice. Can you see all that rivet in detail along with the panel line detail on that kit? That is gorgeous. That is going to paint up beautifully. You're going to take a wash beautifully. You're going to be able to detail that beautifully. That is absolutely stunning from Academy. Um, we've got on the ailerons. Lovely detail. Um, it's hard to tell what parts are what. I'm no expert on this aircraft. Uh, this will be parts for the wing fold mechanism. And there's even small ribbing detail in there, which is really, really nice. Minimal ejector pins. Minimal flash. Minimal bearing. Goodness me, that is really nice. I'm quite impressed with that. That's that's a high standard for Academy. That's really lifting the game. Part sprue B, we've got the Louvre vents, and even on the Louvre vents, we have got riveting detail. I don't know if my camera's going to pick that up. There we go. You see that? That's gorgeous. So you've got them flared and closed. We've got parts for the tail wheel here riveting detail antenna masts um, and extended range fuel tank nice fine pan line detail with rivets as well so that's sprue b wow yeah i'm quite impressed with that so let's go for the next package which has got the upper wing surfaces let's see if that detail level of detail is carried on to the upper wings So we've got upper wing detail and canopy. And guess what? We're in the money. Look at that. Look at the detail on there. So we've got continuous um, panel lines and riveting to the same quality that's on the lower wing on the upper wing. So this is a serious game changer for Academy. They've really stepped up the bar here. We've got continuation of the rivet detail in the flaps. The beautiful detail in the wheel well undercarriage bays and we've got a continuation of this lovely river detail on the horizontal stabilizers um, and then the other aileron here and then we've got the wing tips here on the end of the sprue again all in keeping I'm really impressed with that I have to say I'm actually really impressed with that level of detail on the Academy kit that is going to build into a beautiful model. Now, Academy kits of old, you had to have a bit of work on them to get them to fit. But the more recent kits fit very well. Um, but they've never had this level of de surface detail that I've been aware of anyway. Um, we've got some polycaps here. I'm not sure what that's for, but I'm sure that'll be self-explanatory. I'll leave the canopies till last. So the last main bag we get in the box is the fuselage engine and cockpit details just caught up in the bag there we go let's move that to one side so let's go for the fuselage and see if we can get the holy trinity of wings <laughs> tails and fuselage all being in detail and keeping and yes we can there we go look at that absolutely stunning detail really really nice it's 
in keeping with the rest of the details at all. There's going to be no variances between wings and fuselages. It's obviously the same guy doing all the detail, but beautiful. Really, really nice. So we need to be very careful we don't flood all this detail with paint. So our painting is going to have to be absolutely top-notch to get the best out of this kit. And when you put little bits of washes in here to pick out this detail, it's going to pop. It really is truly going to pop. So both fuselage exteriors on this part here. Uh, we've got the engine detail, which has got very, very fine um, detail for the cooling vanes. We've got the ignition circuit or push rods here. I'm not sure. No expert on these engines, so please don't shoot me down in flames if I get these descriptors wrong. And if we look inside, then we've got some rather nice sidewall detail. I have to say, this is where Academy drops the ball. They do such a good job on the outside, and then they plonk eject pin marks in amongst the cockpit. You're not going to see these, but that one you're going to have to deal with. That one there you're going to have to do something with. And this one here you're probably going to have to do something with, which is a bit of a shame. Again, it's not insurmountable, but... Yeah, you can see it on this side of the cockpit. There's ejector pin marks in amongst there that we're going to have to check that aren't going to foul the fit and spoil the finish. But the level of the exterior detail is so, so good. Am I going to let them off? Eh, no. But I'll give them a little bit of a buy. Yeah, lovely. Right, let's have a look at the actual cockpit detail. So we've got the cockpit floor here. So the, sorry, that last sprue was sprue A, and this is the last big sprue, is sprue E. We've got the cockpit floor. Um, we've got nicely hollowed out fuselage framings. We've got areas for the instrument panel, which is somewhere in here. I'm quite sure we've got the side consoles, the undercarriage and weight on wheels, which is really nice. Uh, closed and open undercarriage doors. We've got lots of little, you know, um, machine gun rear ends. There's the instrument panel. A little softly molded, but I'm sure the decals will actually bring up really nicely on that. Lots of real fine parts. Lots of finer sprue attachment parts as well. Uh, there's the tail wheels. So we've got a number of them probably stowed and deployed, a deck hook, a rest of hook, and then the pilot itself, which actually is not too bad. It's quite nicely detailed. So if we want to build a pilot for the aircraft, we've got that option. Yeah, so that's sprue E, really, really nice. And then the last sprue is the canopy. And this will be the make or break for these kits because there's so much glass work here. Well, so this is sprue F, and I have to say it's crystal clear. It really is crystal clear. You can see that. Absolutely beautiful. Nicely molded framing, and we've got a mask set, which is going to make it so much easier. Uh, Wingtip lights here, and a gun sight here. I'm very, very impressed with these kit parts. Yes, nice, really quite nice. Right, um, enough looking at these parts now. I think we've all got the idea that um, there's some seriously impressive detail in here on this kit. Um, let's get the parts back in the box and get the camera back on me and we can have some final thoughts. So there we have it. Academy's 148 um, U-Tool 148 AM uh, A6M 2B Zero Fighter uh, Model 21. So, thoughts, um, wow, oh, wow, uh, Academy has taken this kit and their tooling to another level. Uh, the surface detail on this kit is absolutely beautiful, um, and it's it's up there with the rest of the um, a top A um, manufacturers. Um, fit and finish, being Academy, I think it'll be quite reasonable. You might have to work on it a little bit, but um, it'll go together well. Their kits, their modern kits are really quite nice. Um, but this is a step up for them um, with regards to not only um, parts makeup interior-wise for the cockpit, 
there's lots of detail in there but the overall surface detail of this kit is um, absolutely stunning really really nice now I know Eddard have also released this similar kit and it will be absolutely stunning but it's more expensive than this kit um, for the money you're paying for this kit it's worth every penny you pay um, as I said I've built the old Hasegawa offering of this kit which is a really really good kit if you can get it for one and um, it doesn't have the level of surface detail that this kit has so overall thoughts really nice um, value for money very reasonable um, should you buy it yeah if you're interested in this subject buy it and build it because you will not be um, sorry for doing it it's going to turn into a really really nice kit um, and I'm really quite impressed and it's definitely on my build schedule probably for later on this year maybe in the next year I want to do a little homage build for the Battle of Midway um, I have a couple other US uh, Midway aircraft that I want to try and build a little display together for and this one will complement those beautifully so there we go that's Academy's um, new tooled uh, Zero Fighter well worth a punt um, in my book so if you have any questions or comments please feel free to put them down and if you would like to or if you've gotten this far and you feel you'd like to subscribe i'd be very very grateful for your subscription um, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified of my future videos until next time guys happy modeling take care and we'll see you soon